Hi, I'm Abigail. Um, I've never done anything like this before, but Geronimo, I am a nerd. I love Star Wars, Harry Potter, um, Doctor Who. Actually, it's because of Doctor Who that my last boyfriend and I broke up. Um, we used to love sitting on the couch and watching it together, but he used to kind of always comment on how freaking hot Amy Pond was, and I'd be like, Hello, I'm a ginger too, and um, <laughs> I'm not bad looking, and I'm sitting right here. <laughs> I mean, she's not even sexy. Her legs are like little sticks of dry spaghetti. I kept expecting them to just snap in two when the monsters chased after her. So finally, I just said, you can't just sit here and lust after that scrawny British tart, so why don't you just f off to England and go shag Amy Pond if you're so in love with her? So anyway, <laughs> he broke up with me, and here we are. <laughs> I, mean, I just want to be loved for who I am, without a restraining order. Is that so much to ask? Amy Pond, not sexy? What a whack job! Let's be honest. You're a fat, pasty dweeb with low self-esteem and capital D desperate. Otherwise, you wouldn't be trolling a dating website aimed at geeks. Am I right? I'm female. I have a functioning vagina and a high tolerance for flop sweat. If you buy me dinner at least twice and a movie of my choice at a movie theater, not your parents' basement, I will eventually allow you to put your port key in my horcrux. But don't expect to stay the night. That's not how we do things. Let's call that one plan B. Hi, I'm Kat, and this is my first try at online dating, so I'm a little nervous, but excited. Um, I don't know what to say. My favorite movie is Star Wars, and my favorite character is Chewbacca because I love Wookiees. I love all kinds of Wookiees. I'm sorry, I'm getting emotional. Um, they're just so big and furry and cuddly, and I just want to hug all of them. I want to hug every Wookiee, and I know I can't. Because that's crazy. Because most of them are still stuck on Kashyyyk. I'm sorry. I promised myself I wouldn't cry. Okay, so maybe you could convince me that one planet would decide to act like it's in the Old West. With the six shooters and the horses. But a whole galaxy? On dozens of different planets. <laughs> Give me a break. The first time that I ever had sex. We were watching Cannibal Holocaust. I still can't get the images out of my mind. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was just thinking about Wookiees again and how many of them were killed in Imperial raids and how brave they are to fight against the Empire. And they're so cute and adorable with their long manes and their clammy noses. And I just want to brush their coats and braid their long hair. And I want all Wookiees in my bed. And I want to roll around with little bow ties on rainbows. <laughs> Shaka Zulu. There's got to be someone normal on this site somewhere. Fudge. I'm kind of busy here. Doc, click on the link I just sent you. What is this, a dating site? Brainiac, you have to be a member to see the content. There, I see my password. Click on it. Oh my giddy aunt. Hi boys, my name is Karen. That's Karen with an I. And I'm looking for love. Did you know about this? Uh, no. Well, if you're gonna move, you better move now. Because compared to the other Looney Tunes on this site, Karen is the belle of the ball. Yeah. Thanks for the heads up, Solly. Just like Kirk and Ohura, and sometimes they make out. Whoa, now hold the phone. 
Hashtag smoking hot. So there's this thing we do every year. In 2004, the third and final Lord of the Rings film, Return of the King, won 11 Academy Awards, a clean sweep of every category in which it was nominated, including Best Picture. And so, every year since then, we have celebrated this epic event by having a party and re-watching the Oscar telecast. Not that we need much of an excuse to eat, drink, and be merry, <laughs> or Pippin, but this is one of the highlights of our nerd year. All right, let's get this road on the show. Who are we waiting for? I'm Flynn Schreimer. It's a party, not a military campaign. I just texted Becky. She said they're two minutes away. Ooh, they? Who's she bringing? That director guy, um, Lance something. The one who's making that fan film. Lance Diver. Is he cute? <laughs> he must be cute. Becky is so picky. He's adorable. <laughs> How do you know him? He came to me a couple of years ago about doing a Bitter Technopolis fan film. I told him he was crazy. There's no way he could do it justice on no budget. He pouted and went away. Well, you be nice. She hasn't come out and said it, but I think she's really excited about this guy. I'm often nice. Uh, uh Karen? I wanted to thank you for inviting me to your Peter Jackson party. Uh, I, I believe a gift is traditional? Soy sauce. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> how thoughtful. Oh, this stuff is great. It really ramps up the flavor of anything. Try it on popcorn sometime. Amazing. I just might do that. Thank you, sweetie. <laughs> mm. Hola, amigos. This is Lance. Lance, this is Karen, Stella, Doc, and Larry's over there. So nice to meet you, Lance. Um, we have pizza and snacks, and there's beer in the fridge. Oh, thanks. <laughs> so just make yourself at home. <laughs> so, where's Blunt? Hey. Uh, hi, guys. Uh, this is my date, Savannah Delacroix. Delacroix. <laughs> How do, everyone? Uh, hi, I'm Karen. Welcome to my home. Oh, thank you. It's such a beautiful place. I wonder, is there a powder room I might freshen up in? We were in the car for almost 20 minutes. Oh, sure. Here, let me show you. Okay. She better not be a hooker. <laughs> She's not a hooker, Doc. Well, I'm guessing you didn't meet her at a Lord of the Rings fan club mixer. No, Doc, you know exactly where I met her. Paul Bartholomew Blunt, I know you did not just bring a hooker into my house. She's not a hooker. Jeez, some friends you guys are. I come to a party with a really hot girl, and you assume that I can never get a babe like that on my own because I'm just some big fanboy loser. Don't be silly, Paul. Nobody thinks that. So where did you meet her? Through a dating service, all right? A hooker dating service? No, it, it was. Uh, Excuse me. Thank you. I needed that. <laughs> so Paul has told me a little about this whole posse of yours. I am so looking forward to getting to know all of you. For those of you new to the party, here's how it works. This is the 2004 Oscar ceremony. Three hours, 40 minutes of nerd validation. We started at the beginning and watch it all the way through, just as we did on that Oscar night of yore before I had TiVo. We do not fast forward through live action shorts, we do not fast forward through best foreign film, and we do not fast forward through the commercials. Yeah, there's this awesome photo mat spot with Martin Scorsese. 
it plays twice. And every time Return of the King wins an Oscar, oh, we drink. Huzzah! But we can still talk, right? We don't have to be quiet for four hours. Oh, sure. It's really more of a background thing and an excuse to get plastered. Mm -hmm. Everybody, these snacks aren't going to eat themselves. Mm. <laughs> so, Paul says y'all are in some kind of club or something. <laughs> it's not a club, it's more like in person social networking. Oh, do tell. Well, originally, at the beginning, it was sort of like a book club, you know? You mean where y'all decide to read the same book at the same time and then you get together and you discuss it? Right. Except with comics. We used to pick six books a month and when each new issue came out, we'd get together at somebody's house and talk about it. At least that's how it started. That was kind of before my time. These days we just hang out. And why do you call yourselves the Busted League? Well, there's this superhero team called the Justice League, and one day, sort of as a joke, we were riffing on that, and somebody, it was probably Doc, came up with Busted League, and it just kind of stuck. Because, you know, everybody's busted in one way or another. That's just life. Have we met before? You look familiar to me somehow. <laughs> Not that I know of. Besides, I am sure I would remember a big strapping boy like you. Alright, here we go. First one of the night, guys. Best Achievement in Art Direction. And the Oscar goes to... Grant Major for Lord of the Rings. Yeah! Return of the King. Cassette decoration. One down. Ten to go. Look. Buddy, I know it's tough out there, but a dating service is not the way to go. It's easy for you, Doc. With that bone structure and those really nice shoes. You've been married. All I've got are Eros Comics and Skinamax. Married and divorced, remember. And there's nothing easy about it. Something about this just doesn't smell right to me. No offense, Polly, you're cute as a button, but in my experience, hotness seeks out its own level. This girl is out of your league, she's out of my league, she's out of any league you can think of. So what, you contacted her through the service and she agreed to a date? Well, yeah, we met for coffee a couple of days ago. She was nice, kind of chatty. I was sweaty and flustered. I started telling her about this party and she got really excited and wanted to meet all my friends. That's crazy, nobody wants to meet the friends on a second date. Wait a minute, you didn't tell her about Karen having money, did you? Of course not, I'm not stupid. I mean, I may have mentioned that she has a really nice house. I knew it. She's casing the joint. So, this girl, she's hot. Crikey, yes, I'm aware. So, what's her day job? I don't know, something secretarial, I think, why? Hmm, so her weekends are probably free. So, dare I ask about issue number three? It's done. I uploaded the tips last night. It is now in the hands of my publisher, and I can sleep like a normal person. Sleep is good. I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of yours, too, he segued, and yet I still haven't seen page one. Don't start guilt tripping, Doc. I've got Xeroxes in the car. I'll give them to you later. Fine. Besides, you need to get your head back in the Karen game. It's time to man up and rope this filly. Rope this filly? Karen's awesome, and sooner or later some other guy's going to notice. You need to act before that guy does. Actually, some new information has come to light, and I'm thinking of making my move. Today. Don't blow it, Ira. <laughs> Carrie, your house is just lovely. It's Karen. With an eye. And thank you. Did you decorate it yourself? Lord, no. I paid a guy to do it. If I would have done it, it just would have been movie posters and framed comic art. <laughs> How charming. So, how's it going? Lance-wise, I mean. Uh, pretty good. He took me out to dinner last night, and then we saw that horrible Richard Curtis movie, Total Chick Flick. And? 
And so I kissed him goodnight and let him squeeze my butt for like three seconds and that was it. He's a really good kisser by the way. It's hard for me to live vicariously if you don't even get into heavy petting. It was our first official date and nobody rides the Becky train on the first date, you know that. He's gotta earn it, baby. So, does tonight count as the second date? Haven't decided yet. Hey, you're Lance Diver. Yeah. I'm Paul. That's just great. I, I saw your Space Ghost fan film. Really nice work. The girl playing Jan was hot. Yeah? She was a real pain in the ass prima donna. Uh, the CGI blip was a little iffy though, and some of the shots didn't quite work. Well, there's 32,600 unique YouTube viewers who would disagree with you on uh, that, Paul. Don't get me wrong, it was a great flick overall. <laughs> What was your budget on that? Look, I don't want to discuss budgets with you, Paul. It misplaces the emphasis, all right? We did what we needed to to get the job done. So, uh, the Crimson Storm, huh? <sighs> yep. I, I think that book is awesome. <laughs> uh, really ballsy satire, you know? Been swapping emails with Clive. He's really excited about the project. Clive Armbruster, the, the creator? That's awesome. And, and Becky's great. She's gonna be awesome as the Storm. Yeah, she's uh, she's something all right. I have got to talk to that girl. Who, Paul's date? She seems nice. Karen, where do you keep your comics? Uh, in the library, sweetie, upstairs. Right. I don't think I like that Savannah girl. She seems fakey. And what is with that accent? Is that for real? Plus, she seems awfully smug about being the hottest thing in the room. Present company excluded, of course. <laughs> that was quick, Mr. Reimer. <laughs> Excellent work. <laughs> Bonus points. <laughs> the empirical evidence will bear out my thesis. You're a good man, Doc Reimer. <laughs> Hi there. Savannah, right? Right. And you're Betty? Becky, uh, listen, I want to ask you a question. <sighs> yes, they're real. <laughs> Believe me, I know. I can spot an enlargement through three parkas and a bulletproof vest. No, here's the thing. Have you ever done any modeling? <laughs> you mean like Tyra Banks? Not exactly. Allow me to introduce you to Power Girl. So, I've got a pitch for you. And, and hear me out. Do you have anybody doing a making of doc for the DVD? You know, interviews and behind the scenes stuff? Because I could totally do that for you. I have two years of Film is Lit at SMU, and I shot some B-roll stuff for that web feature about Neil Gaiman signing at Big Star Comics last year. It, it was mostly crowd stuff, but still, it was really... So you've never actually made a documentary before? Not... Do you have anything I could look at? Not really, no. But I guarantee you, you will not find anybody more enthusiastic about this project than me. What do you got to lose? I'll think about it. Is that a yes? I heard yes. <laughs> on one condition. Name it. Introduce me to your lady friend. I can make you a costume. All you have to do is walk around the conventions and have your picture taken like eight billion times. Yes, it can be tedious, and yes, you have to deal with a lot of sweaty geeks. But there is money to be made with all of this. You could do Power Girl, Supergirl, Black Canary, and you totally look like that chick from Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> I don't think so. I'm not really a showy person. I just don't need that kind of validation from strangers. Who said anything about validation? Look, I'm talking cold hard cash here, sister. I know a guy. Well, hey, Randy. Oh. Yes! 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 Hey, Randy, it's a little loud in here. Let me find some place brighter. 
So what's up, Brandy? You're not still at the office, are you? Hey, Stella. Yeah, it's been a long day. You got the uploads, right? 14 hours to spare. It's pretty impressive under the circumstances. Yeah, we, uh, we got them. They look good. Um, listen, Stella, I'm afraid I have some bad news. I've been on the phone with Diamond for the last hour, and... Well, they're dropping the book, Stella. We're gonna have to cancel Love in the Sky. Oh. You have six brothers? And two sisters. <laughs> you'd think we were Amish or something, but really my parents were just two of the horniest hippies you'd ever want to meet. <laughs> <laughs> my word. This girl sure asks a lot of questions. I can't believe she doesn't want to do this. At a big show like that, she could make like 300 bucks a day. I mean, she's barely spoken three words to Paul. She's supposed to be his date. It's just tacky. And why are you so interested in getting this girl to dress up anyway? Finder's fee, baby. I know a guy. Look, you know the speech. The economy's in the crapper. Sales are low. Store owners are reluctant to stock a book by an unknown creator. All that stuff. Are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. I mean, we've known the numbers have been borderline. Look, everybody here loves the book. You know that. Yeah. I know that. I bitched until I was blue in the face. But they are sticking to their guns on this one. Look, I'm sorry. But you know if it was up to me. I know. And, and look, the tiny silver lining here is they're going to honor the orders on issue number three. So all that work wasn't wasted. You'll have a new book on the stands in six weeks. But that's the last one. Barring a miracle, yeah. Look, I'm sorry to call you so late, but I just thought I should let you know. I appreciate that. But, um, I'm sort of in the middle of something here, so I should go. Of course. Sorry, Stella. Yeah. Thanks for the call. Ira, your real name is Ira? I had six older brothers. My parents were running out of options. So why do they call you Doc? That's actually an old school thing. I'm the seventh son of a seventh son, and there's the old wives' tale that says the seventh son of a seventh son is supposed to become a doctor. Intriguing. <laughs> so, are you a doctor? Oh, good grief, no. I faint at the sight of medical school bills, so that was never any hope for me. Better to starve as an unsuccessful comic book artist. Wait a minute. Say that again. Say what, sugar? Doctor. Doctor? Say, where are we, Doctor? Where are we, Doctor? Excuse me a minute. Have you guys seen Stella? I need to ask her something. You've got to be an actress or something. <laughs> no. Well, I have dabbled a bit. In 11th grade, I played Blanche Dubois in the Putnam High School production of Streetcar Named Desire. I was told that Howard Gomez, our rather crusty chemistry teacher, was moved to tears. Well, you've got a great face and other marketable assets. Uh, here, here's my card. I'd like to talk to you about a role in my next production. Well, like I said, I don't have a lot of experience. Oh, I think I could teach you a few things. Yes. Yes, I can. Everything okay in here? You missed best film editing and best original song. I dropped my book. Who did what? Randy just called. They're canceling my book. Love in the Sky ends with issue number three. 
I guess it's a good thing I didn't end it on a cliffhanger. Uh, the deuce, you say? So what, they just called you about it now? On a Friday afternoon? So your whole weekend's shot? It's better this way, Doc. It's better than I know. I've just got to deal with it. Well, this sucks. Yeah. This is just crazy. Absolutely insane. How do you win an Oscar for sound mix and not even be nominated for sound editing? Can someone answer that for me, please? Every year, man, you've got to let it go. 11 Oscars is enough. 12 would not have made it any better. I don't even know why I'm talking to you. Look, what do I always say about stuff like this? The doing is its own reward. Right. The thing is, you talk to any famous person and they'll tell you the same thing. I just kept trying and trying and working and persevering and finally it paid off. What nobody talks about is the fact that there are a million talented people out there with the exact same story, except without the happy ending. I know. The work is the point, not the reward. If the work makes you happy, then everything else is gravy. Right now, it all just makes me sad. I know. Believe me, I've been there. You're, you're entitled to mourn. Besides, what is my one rule? Art is nothing without fear? No, the other one. Always do what they say you can't do? Close enough. Wookie hug? Wookie hug. <sighs> Is this? That's Eddie. Eddie? Eddie, your dead husband, Eddie? Eddie, who is now Ashes? Yeah. Karen, this is a cookie jar. It was his favorite cookie jar. I'm going to take a moment. Hey. Not a word to anyone else, OK? Not yet. As you wish. Where are we, Doctor? Yes! Best adapted screenplay, my favorite one of the night. And look, there's Fran Walsh, Peter Jackson's main squeeze. You don't see her very often. She's a handsome woman. She's got that sort of Hippie, gypsy, earth mother vibe. It's pretty sexy. This must be the coldest planet in the universe. Where are we, Doctor? Guardian of the solar system. Oh. <laughs> Big pardon? I finally figured out why you seem so familiar. Guardian of the Solar System, a rather infamous Lost Doctor Who fan film. Only the trailer was ever released, and you played the companion. Without the vaudeville accent, of course, and going by the name of Jennifer Birch. What are you talking about, darling? Come on. I know it's been a couple of years, but I just looked it up on YouTube. It's definitely you, so drop the act. That was my twin sister. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Well, how do you know I wasn't just doing a regular Midwestern accent for that movie? Because nobody talks like this. Okay, fine. Whatever. I'm so over this. Paul! You're taking me home. What the hell? Did you know about this? No, of course not. And I can't believe you recognized her from a fan film. You hate fan films. I hate Star Wars fan films. Except for troops. Except for troops. Paul, now! So what's with the act, Savannah? <sighs> Look, I'm an actress. This is what I do. I people watch. I'm doing a play in Fort Worth next month, and I needed to refine the accent to make sure it played in the real world. 
I use that ridiculous dating website to try it out on people that don't know me. That's crazy. And dangerous. <laughs> it's a geek website. They're harmless. They're not like normal guys. The only way I'd get hurt is if one of them fell on me. That's a crappy way to treat people. Fine, whatever. Are you taking me home or am I taking a cab? You're taking a cab! But here's some money for cab fare. Fine. Anything to get away from you freakazoids. Bye, Lance. I'll call you. She'll call you? About the movie. She's gonna do some extra work. I totally knew she was an actress. <sighs> They're fake, you know. Bitch. What'd I miss? I can't believe this. I know. I... <sighs> and this definitely does not count as an official second date. I'm still asleep. Here it is, best picture. Clean sweep. The Lord of the Rings, hey. The Return of the King, Barry M. Osborne, Peter Jackson, and Fran Walsh producer. Well, that's it. I'm going home. You good to drive? Yeah, I've been drinking Fresca for the last hour. And I just got dissed by a crazy woman. I'm totally sober. Hashtag Loserville. Hey, Polly. Chin up, buddy. The right woman comes along, she won't be on a dating website. That's just a crazy way to find a partner. Come on, Larry. I'll give you a ride home. Well, this is the weirdest Lord of the Rings party we have ever had. No doubt. So, Karen. Yeah, Bill? I've been thinking a lot about you lately, and me, you and me, and I, we've been friends for a long time. I mean, we've been through a lot. <laughs> no, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that I would like to change things, the way things are between us. I mean, you're obviously one of my best friends, but <laughs> I was thinking that I would like to date you. Not as a friend, I mean, as a couple. Two people who are dating with the uh, possibility of a long-term relationship. And I was hoping that you would be agreeable to this proposition. Well, that was not the reaction that I was expecting. How long do you think it'll be before she remembers this is her house?
Hey, Savannah. I, I, I mean, um, Jennifer. Hey, uh, this is Paul. Um, just want to call and make sure you got it home okay. I hope the cab ride was good. I uh, hope I gave you enough money. Um, if I didn't, just send me your PayPal account login stuff and I'll send. Uh, if you want to hang out, call me. Bye.